The bone system has seen an update in Moho 12. The biggest enhancement is the ability to check on ignored by inverse schematics for any bone. So this means when you're working with target bones, you no longer will have issues if you have dangling bones, just as one example. Let me demonstrate this just to give you a better idea. We have a rig here, a simple one, of a creature leg. And if I go to frame one, and I take the transform bones tool with T on my keyboard, come over here, click and drag, you can see that this rig is working pretty good. The only issue is we don't have the spikes attached to the rig, so they're currently floating in space. We could use layer or point binding and attach the spikes to each of those leg bones. That way, they would move along with the leg and everything would be fine. But let's say you want to add bone physics or you want to manually move the spikes as the arm moves, and you could easily do so with bones. Well, under normal circumstances, we can come back here to frame zero. Let me just use B and deselect that bone, and then A for the add bone tool. I'll come over here to these first three top spikes. I'm going to use Alt and then click on this bone. So that way these bones attach to that bone. Click and drag to create this bone. Alt click, do the same here. And then one more right here. We'll repeat right down here, except this time Alt click on this bone, click and drag. So that way these spikes attach to that bone. To make things easier, we'll use the bone strength option. Let me just select all these bones here. Use B, make sure lasso mode is turned on. We'll select the bones. And then we can come over here, bone strength, and then reduce it so that the strength just covers those spikes. So, so far, so good. However, when it comes time to animate this out, on frame one, if I go to this target bone, click and drag, you can see that it breaks the animation. This bone is no longer following, and the spikes, while following that bone, really serve no purpose now since the rig is essentially broken and this target bone isn't really doing what it should. You can easily change this. We'll use the Select Bone tool by selecting all of these bones, and then coming up here to your bone constraints, and then turning on Ignored by Inverse Schematics. Close this. Now on frame one, if we use the transform bones tool, you'll see that it all works nicely now. So really, all you have to worry about is clicking on a button. In addition, there are now more bone colors to choose from. So if you want to color a bone, we can select this one, come up here, and you can see we now have more colors to choose from than in previous versions, giving you more organizational options. And if you're working with smart actions in Moho Pro 12, this only applies to Pro, you'll know when creating smart actions, you want to name the action after your bone. That's how you establish the smart action link. But in this case, let me come down here and click on this bone. You can see we can note the name like we could in previous versions. However, when it comes time to make the action, let me just bring up my actions panel here with Command K or Control K if you're on Windows. You can come over here and click to create a new action. And when you have that bone selected, it will automatically put the correct name of the smart action for that corresponding bone into the field. That way you don't have to memorize bone names, especially if you have a lot of bones and you want to create a lot of smart actions. And this also applies let me just click OK. If you want to create a second action, come back out here to mainline. Once again, I'm still on that bone. If I click on new action, you can see it properly puts a space and two after the action name, allowing us to create two actions for that bone without having to do any manual naming on our part. I think you'll find that these new features greatly help when working with bones in Moho 12. If you'd like more information, tutorials, or to purchase Moho, visit moho.smithmicro.com.